thanks for tuning in. This is the life of miner. Now let's check out week 85 of my mining payouts. So at the beginning of these payout videos, let's go over the date and time when I took these payouts. I took these payouts on November 29th of 2020, about 3.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And of course, today, the price of Ethereum, as of right now, it's about $554.40. This is going to be just a one-week payout, but I will go over the full month net profit at the end of the month, including my electricity bill and my YouTube profits. And today is actually the end of the month, so of course, I'll be going over all of that as well. So I did get new GPUs and I did increase my hash rates on Ethereum. So I do now average around 2.3 giga hashes mining Ethereum. And I'm still mining Monero, but I did actually turn off my Monero rig as of right now, just cause I did move some mining rigs around, but I do average around eight kilo hashes mining Monero. Okay, so now pulling my Excel and checking out what I mined. And like I mentioned, this is for one week. I did mine around 0.72 Ethereum, equaling around $397.80, and about 0.03 Monero, equaling around $3.64. So I did sell everything as of today. I would have made $401.44. Okay, so now pulling my electricity bill, I do pay about 10 cents per kilowatt hours. So for the month of November, my electricity bill did come out to be about $354. So now pulling my Excel, and if I did sell weekly for the month of November, I would have made $1,376.02. Now my first mining farm, the electricity bill came out to be that $354. My second mining farm is a set fee of $100, so my total electricity cost came out to be about $454. So my total net profit for the month of November came out to be $922.02. Now if you did want to check out my YouTube profits, I did make about $2,378.59 this month off YouTube. Now just be for my YouTube profits, I usually average around $450 to $550. But for this month, since the price of Bitcoin and since GPU mining is more attractive, I've been getting a lot more views. But I'm expecting next month it will be back to normal. Okay, so for this week's fun clip, this is two news clips on why Bitcoin's price dropped after Thanksgiving. So let's check this out. I think this is actually very similar to what happened in, in 2017 uh, around the, the China ban, quote unquote on Bitcoin and, and I think what happens in these situations is you know, we had a nine month period where the, the asset ran uh, ran up fourfold, right? It, it was up almost almost five times uh, over that nine month period. And uh, then you get a lot of speculators coming into the market. So you know if you look at the history of, of the price of, of any asset, uh, it tends to make a series of of higher lows over time. And there's volatility, and that volatility can be triggered by all kinds of, of things. And in this case, uh, like back in 2017, uh, there's this fear, this, I think, irrational fear that some government is, is gonna ban cryptocurrency. And so the whole, the whole nature of cryptocurrency is, is that's not possible. Uh, what happened in the China case was, you know, the price fell about 20% over the course of the next month. Um, from about uh, 4,600 down to 3,700. And then people realized, wait, they'll just move the exchanges from China to Japan or Korea. And uh, by the end of the year, three months later, uh, prices were up to the record highs of, of uh, almost 20,000. So I'm not saying that we're gonna go up, you know, fivefold from here uh, in the next three months, but I am gonna say that uh, going mm -hmm. forward, this too shall pass and uh, people will calm down a little bit. Well, the markets, I mean, tremendously calmed down. We're down 175 on Bitcoin right now, 1%, but that's a long way from being down 2,000. But what it said to me though, Mark, is that there are players out there, irrational or not, that are worried clearly or ready to hit sell, at least anyway, on this, even the sniff of any kind of regulation, even around the wallets, not necessarily the crypto itself. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point, Brian. And even around the wallets, not necessarily the crypto itself. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point, Brian. And 11 years old, and there's still the vast majority of people really don't understand how cryptocurrency works, how blockchain technology works. And so what you've got is you've got a, a core base of owners. And, and they're not gonna sell no matter what the price. And they've been holding for many, many years. They call them the hodlers uh, for short. And then what happens is as the price starts to move, it draws in 
speculators. And I don't mean speculator with a negative connotation. I mean, you know, the opposite of, of a long-term investor, someone who is trading that asset. And that could be in gold, it could be in stocks. I mean, think about Amazon. Amazon fell almost 20% in the first two weeks of September this year. And some people freaked out and some people thought, oh my gosh, you know, something's going to change. Something's going to be terrible about, about the, the Christmas season or we're going to reopen and people aren't going to buy as much stuff from home. Uh, that incremental seller then causes pressure. Uh, short term, the price moves, but the long term trend is still upwards. You know, we always talk about Bitcoin, Mark, only because it, it's the big dog, if you will, of crypto. But as we've yeah. highlighted a couple of days earlier in our RBI, there's other ones, you know, XRP, Ether, they've done better, Litecoin. And they all kind of do different things. We don't need to go into the technologies of the platform. To be frank, I'm not sure I could even go that deep into a mark myself. But is there is there one model that you prefer, you know, whether it's the Ether model off the blockchain, is it Bitcoin? Is there one that you like or is it really Bitcoin's where the action is? Yeah, look, the, the easiest way to think about it, uh, for me anyway, is, is similar to internet protocols. So when the internet came along, there were lots of competing protocols and nobody really knew what we were going to use to operate. You, know, you and I today are, are transmitting in, in high definition uh, for me sitting in a hotel room in Tulsa, Oklahoma after the holiday uh, using the technology called the internet, right? And it translates uh, or transmits over something called TCP IP. And that's the, the base layer protocol. On top of that, there are other protocols. We have HTTP uh, for email, we have SMTP, we have file transfer protocol, and there's about half a dozen protocols. Uh, but the big daddy is TCP IP. And the same thing I think is true with blockchain technology and cryptocurrency is Bitcoin will be ultimately, I think, the base layer protocol. On top of that, there's there's Ethereum, and then there could be a handful of other protocols uh, that are that are really important over time. But at the end of the day, we're talking about technology. Blockchain technology is the operating system for the internet of value. You know, it's the same thing as the TCP IP is the operating system for the internet or DOS or Windows was the operating system for personal computers, mm -hmm. or iOS is the operating system for the iPhone, which I'm transmitting. I'm, like, I'm transmitting live television on the iPhone. Pretty, pretty amazing. High wealth Bitcoin's rally came to a halt this week as investors fear some more regulation and look to take some gains. After climbing to nearly 20,000 before Thanksgiving, Bitcoin is back below 17,000 today. That was a 12% drop over just two days. That sell-off started Wednesday night after the CEO of Coinbase, which is the largest U.S. crypto exchange, tweeted about potential regulation. Brian Armstrong said he's hearing rumors that the U.S. Treasury Department is planning to rush out new regulations and essentially ban people from holding their own cryptocurrency in what's known as a wallet. Armstrong says he's, quote, concerned about the unintended side effects. Some traders also cited a wave of leveraged positions unwinding this week, and some were just looking for some good old fashioned profit taking. Bitcoin is up more than 250% since those March lows. All right, so thanks for checking out this week's mining payout. Stay tuned for next week's as well. And shout out to this week's random comment winner. And if you did want to be featured, just write a comment below. And I do stream these payout videos live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the life of miner every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. And if you do need any type of help, definitely check out my Discord. I or someone knowledgeable will definitely help you out. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you enjoyed it. So we decided to see what's next. But of course, thanks for watching and always happy mining. Thanks for watching The Life of a Miner. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You don't want me to get angry and turn Super Saiyan, so make sure you subscribe to The Life of a Miner. I'm also the narrator. Next time on The Life of a Miner.